Hi there, there's a boy in the girls' bathroom. We're going to carry on a little bit of reading and it's going to help us with our literacy today. So get settled down, I'm just going to read a few chapters and we're going to think about, while we're reading, the characterisation of Bradley. What's the author done? How have they shown us all about Bradley and his personality and what do we learn about him? So that's something to think about as we read today, okay? So we're going to carry on from where we left off the other morning and we're reading from chapter three. So, Bradley opened the front door to his house, then made a face. It smelled like fish. You're home early, his mother said from the kitchen. She was a large woman with fat arms. She was wearing a sleeveless green dress and holding a butcher knife. My friends and me, we raced home, we told her. A fat fish about the size of one of Mrs. Chalker's arms lay on a board on the counter. Bradley watched her raise the knife above the fish, then quickly hack off its head. He walked down the hall to his room and closed the door. Hey, everybody, he announced, Bradley's home. But he was pretending that it was someone else who was speaking. Hi, Bradley. Hi, Bradley, he said. Hi, everyone, he answered, this time speaking for himself. He was talking to his collection of little animals. He had about 20 of them. There was a brass lion that he'd found one day in a garbage can on the way to school. There was an ivory donkey that his parents had brought back from their trip to Mexico. There were two owls that were once used as salt and pepper shakers, a glass unicorn with its broken horn, a family of cocker spaniels attached to an ashtray, a raccoon, a fox, an elephant, a kangaroo, and some that were so chipped and broken you couldn't tell what they were. And they were all friends. And they all liked Bradley. Where's Ronnie? Bradley asked. And Bartholomew? I don't know, said the fox. They're always going off together, said the kangaroo. Bradley leaned across the bed and reached under his pillow. He pulled out Ronnie the rabbit and Bartholomew the bear. He knew they were under his pillow because that was where he'd put them before he went to school. What were you doing back there? he demanded. Ronnie giggled. She was a little red rabbit with tiny blue eyes glued on her face. One ear was broken. Nothing, Bradley, she said. I was just taking a walk. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom, said Bartholomew. He was a brown and white ceramic bear that stood on his hind legs. His mouth was open, revealing beautifully made teeth and a red tongue. They were making out, announced the Mexican donkey. I saw them kissing. Ronnie giggled. Oh, Ronnie, scolded Bradley. What am I going to do with you? She giggled again. Bradley reached into his pocket and took out a handful of cut-up bits of paper, his language test. Look, everybody, he said. I brought you some food. He dropped the bits of paper onto the bed, then scooped all his animals into it. Not so fast, he said. There's plenty for everybody. Thank you, Bradley, said Ronnie. It's delicious. Yeah, it's real good, said Bartholomew. Don't play with your food, the mother cocker spaniel told her three children. Pass the salt, said the pepper owl. Pass the pepper, said the salt owl. Let's hear it for Bradley, called the lion. They all cheered. Yay, Bradley! Ronnie finished eating, then hopped off by herself, singing. doo 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 doo, -doo. Then she said, I think I'll go swimming in the pond. The pond was a purple stain on Bradley's bedspread, where he had once spilled grape juice. Ronnie jumped into the water. Suddenly she cried, help, I have cramp. You shouldn't have gone swimming right after eating, Bradley reminded her. Help, I'm drowning. Bartholomew looked up. That sounds like Ronnie, he said. It sounds like she's drowning in the pond. He hurried to the pond to rescue her. Hold on, Ronnie, he shouted. I'm... The door to Bradley's room swung open and his sister Claudia barged in. She was four years older than Bradley. Get out of here, he snapped at her, or I'll punch your face in. What are you doing, she teased, talking to your little animal friends? She laughed, showing her braces. It was Claudia who had broken Ronnie's ear. She stepped on it accidentally. She told Bradley it was his fault for leaving his animals strewn all over the floor. He didn't tell her that Ronnie wasn't on the floor, but lost in the desert. Instead, he'd said, who cares? It's just a stupid red rabbit. Mum wants you, said Claudia. She told me to get you. What does she want? She wants to talk to you. Tell your animals you'll be right back. I wasn't talking to them, Bradley insisted. What were you doing then? I was arranging them. I was putting them in alphabetical order. It's a project for school. Call my teacher if you don't believe me. Claudia snickered. Although she always made fun of Bradley's animals, she had felt really bad when she stepped on the rabbit. She knew it was Bradley's favourite. She bought him the bear to make up for it. What do I want a bear for, he said, when she gave it to him. Bradley went into the kitchen. The fish, now cut up and covered with onions, was frying on top of the stove. You want me? he asked. How's everything at school? asked his mother. Great! In fact, today I was elected class president. Your grades are all right? Yep. Mrs. Ebble handed back a language test today and I got another A. In fact, it was an A+. Plus. May I see it? Mrs. Ebble hung it on the wall. Next for my other A tests. Mrs. Ebble just called, said his mother. His heart fluttered. Mm. Why didn't you tell me that tomorrow was parents' conference day? asked his mother. Didn't I tell you? he asked innocently. No, I don't think so. I told you, he said. You said you couldn't go. You must have forgot. 
Mrs. Ebble seems to think it's important for me to be there, said his mother. That's just her job, said Bradley. The more mothers she sees, the more money she makes. Well, I made an appointment with her for 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Bradley stared at her in disbelief. No, you can't go, he shouted, stamping his foot. It's not fair. Bradley, what? It's not fair. It's not fair. He ran into his bedroom and slammed the door behind him. A moment later, his mother knocked on the door. What is it? She asked. What's not fair? It's not fair, he yelled. You promised. What did I promise, Bradley? What did I promise? He didn't answer. He couldn't until he thought up why it wasn't fair and what she had promised him. He stayed in his room until Claudia told him that he had to come to dinner. He followed her out to the dining room where his mother and father were already sitting down. Did you wash your hands? asked their father. Yes, Bradley and Claudia lied. Bradley's father worked in the police department. He'd been shot in the leg four years ago while chasing a robber. Now he needed a cane to walk, so he worked behind a desk. He didn't like that kind of work and often came home grumpy and short-tempered. The police never caught the man who had shot him. I hate fish, said Bradley as he sat down. So do I, said Claudia. It sticks to my braces and I taste it for weeks. Brussels sprouts make me throw up, said Bradley. They smell like old garbage, said Claudia. That's enough, said your father. You'll both eat what's on your plates. Bradley held his nose with one hand while he picked up a Brussels sprout with the other and put it into his mouth whole. What's all this nonsense about your mother breaking a promise? asked his father. Bradley was ready. She promised to me take me to the zoo tomorrow, and now she won't. What? exclaimed his mother. I never said I'd take you to the zoo. She did too, said Bradley. Since there is no school tomorrow, she said she'd take me to school. I didn't even know there was no school until his teacher called me this afternoon, his mother protested. You promised, said Bradley. OK, said his father. Janet, what time's your appointment tomorrow with Bradley's teacher? Eleven o'clock. Well, OK, you can go to your appointment and still have time to take Bradley to the zoo after lunch. But I never said I'd take him to the zoo. You did, accused Bradley. And we have to go in the morning. We have to be at the zoo at 11 o'clock. Claudia snickered. Why do you have to be at the zoo at 11 o'clock? He glared at her, then turned back to his father, because that's when they feed the lions. Claudia laughed. She promised she'd take me to see them feed the lions at 11 o'clock, Bradley insisted. His mother was flabbergasted. I, I don't even know when they feed the lions. 11 o'clock, said Bradley. Don't lie to your mother, said his father. Really, said Bradley. They feed the lions at 11 o'clock. I don't tolerate lying, said his father. I'm not lying, said Bradley. Call the zoo if you don't believe me. Don't lie to your mother and don't lie to me. Call the zoo. Your mother said she never promised to take you to the zoo. She's lying. Right after he said it, he knew it was a mistake. His father turned purple with rage. Don't ever call your mother a liar. Now go to your room. Just call the zoo, Bradley pleaded. Maybe I did tell him I'd take him to the zoo, said his mother. See, said Bradley. Keep it up, Bradley, said his father. Just keep it up. You want to be a criminal when you grow up? You want to spend your life in jail? I see people like you every day at the police station. Just keep it up. Bradley stared angrily at his father. Not all criminals go to jail, he asserted. What about the man who shot you? I said, go to your room. Bradley stood up from the table. I didn't want to eat this junk anyway. He stomped down the hall into his room and slammed the door. Then he opened it and shouted, call the zoo! One last time, then slammed it again. He lay on his bed and cried. Don't cry, Bradley, said Ronnie. Everything will be all right. You'll think of something, Bradley, said Bartholomew. You always do. You're the smartest kid in the world. Bradley stood at the front door and hollered. Mrs. Ebel is a liar. Don't believe anything she tells you. Bradley's mother got into the car, gritted her teeth and drove to school. She was just as afraid as Bradley, if not more so of what Mrs. Ebel would tell her. She wanted to believe Bradley when he told her he was getting all A's or was elected class president. She tried to fool herself that it could be true, even though she knew it couldn't. She knew her son, and she knew Mrs. Ebel wouldn't take the trouble to call her on the phone if everything was really as wonderful as Bradley, Bradley said it was. Still, she hoped. She opened the door to Bradley's classroom. No one was there. Hello? She called out timidly. She looked around. There was a bulletin board covered with A papers. She looked from one paper to another and hoped with all her heart that she'd see one with Bradley's name on it. She didn't. In the back corner of the room, saw it, she saw a chart that listed the name of every student in the class. Next to each name was a row of gold stars. Next to Bradley Chalkers, there were no stars. Mrs Chalkers? Startled, she turned around to see Mrs Ebble. Oh, you scared me, she said, then smiled. Mrs Ebble didn't smile. Mrs Chalkers sat at a chair next to the teacher's desk and bravely listened to Mrs Ebble. L bravely listened as Mrs Ebble told her about Bradley. There was nothing Mrs Ebble said that she didn't already know. Still, it hurt to hear. 
Deep down, he really is a good boy, she tried to tell Bradley's teacher. I'm sure he has a lot of good qualities, said Mrs. Evel. However, I have 28 other children in my class and I can't spend all my time trying to help Bradley. He has to decide whether he wants to be part of the class or not. If he doesn't want to be part of the class, then he shouldn't be here. He just makes it that much harder for everyone else. What can I do? asked Bradley's mother. The school has just hired a counsellor, said Mrs. Ebel. I'd like your permission to, for Bradley to start seeing her once a week. Anything that will help my son, said Mrs. Chalkers. I don't know if she can help him or not, said Mrs. Ebel. Bradley has a very serious behaviour problem. If he doesn't show improvement soon, more drastic measures will have to be taken. Deep down, he really is a good boy, said Bradley's mother. Well, let's go meet the counsellor, said Mrs. Ebel. She led Bradley's mother down the halls to the counsellor's office. The door was open, but no one was there. Bradley's mother stepped into the room. Boxes were everywhere. Some were turned over with their contents half spilled on the floor. A yellow ladder lay on its side. In the centre of the room was a round table surrounded by chairs. But the table and chairs were covered with papers and boxes and games and books. There was hardly room for Bradley's mother to stand. Just moving in, Mrs Ebel explained. I'm sure it'll ha you'll have it cleaned up tomorrow. Mrs Chalkers shrugged. She picked up a dolphin puppet from an open box on the table and put her hand inside it. Suddenly there was a loud grunt and a young woman entered the room. She dropped the box she was carrying and more than a hundred crayons spilled out across the floor. Oh, hello, she said. She was a lot younger than either Mrs Ebel or Mrs Chalkers. She wore blue jeans and a red t-shirt with rock and roll written across in light blue letters. She had light brown hair, almost blonde, and clear blue eyes. I'm Carla Davis, she said, and held out her hand. Bradley's mother stared at her a moment, then reached out to shake her hand, but suddenly realised she was still wearing the dolphin puppet. She quickly removed it and put it back in the box on the table. The counsellor smiled. She needs to sign the form so that you can start seeing her son, said Mrs Evel. Miss Davis looked hopelessly around her office. They're around here somewhere, she muttered, then began tearing into boxes. Perhaps I'd better come back, said Bradley's mother. Found them, said the counsellor, holding up the forms. She cleared a space on the round table by pushing away a box and gave Mrs Chalk as a form to sign. Bradley's mother looked around the messy office, then at the young woman with the rock and roll t-shirt. She shrugged her shoulders and signed her name. Miss Davis took the form from her. Oh, you're Bradley Chalkers' mother, Mrs Chalkers nodded. You would not believe all the horror stories I've heard about Bradley Chalkers, said the new counsellor. I've been here less than three hours, but it seems like every teacher in the school has dropped by to warn me about him. Deep down, he really is, Bradley's mother started to say. I can't wait to meet him, the counsellor interrupted. He sounds charming, just delightful. At dinner, Bradley's father asked how the meeting with Bradley's teacher went. Bradley looked down at his mashed potatoes. Fine, said his mother. Bradley's doing very well. Good, glad to hear it, said his father. Bradley was glad to hear it too. Later that, later that evening, his mother came into his room. I met Miss Davis, the new counsellor, she said. You're going to begin seeing her tomorrow. No, said Bradley, I won't go. Please, Bradley, don't be that way. She can help you if you'll let her. If you don't need any help, you said I... I don't need any help. You said I was doing very well. Did you want me to tell your father the truth? Do you want me? To, do you want to be sent to military school? Maybe he's right. I don't know. Maybe that's what you need. You said I was doing very well. I heard you. Please, Bradley, said his mother. Give Miss Davis a chance. Please. You should have taken me to the zoo. It was drizzling the next morning as Bradley walked to school. He wore red rubber boots and a yellow raincoat. He stamped in every puddle along the way, making big splashes. He suddenly stopped when he saw Jeff standing next to the school under the overhang. Bradley's right foot remained in the centre of a puddle as he stared at his one and only friend. He took a deep breath and slowly walked toward Jeff. He has to like me, he tried to convince himself. I gave him a dollar. Hi Bradley, Jeff greeted him. He didn't answer. If you want, I can help you with your homework sometimes, Jeff offered. I know I'm new here, but I'm pretty smart and we learned the same stuff at my old school. He shrugged modestly. Bradley looked at Jeff as if he were from outer space. I don't need any help, he said. I'm the smartest kid in class. Ask anyone. They headed for Mrs Ebel's room, side by side, but not necessarily together. So there we go. We've learned a little bit more about Bradley today, haven't we? And how he's, you know, he really does tell lies, doesn't he? And it sounds at school as if he's really built himself up. A bit of a reputation, hasn't he, for kind of not being the easiest child to get on with. So it's very interesting. So we're going to carry on reading this in our sessions as we go along. So you can watch this back and it will help you with your literacy work today. Okay, take care. Goodbye.